Sources tell CBS News that police in New York have arrested a suspect in connection with a series of murders on Long Island. Yeah, what's going on, y'all? Thank you for coming to my channel. My name is Wally, and you are now tuned into Playboy Hustlers TV. Yo, right now we on a serious note. They just caught the Gilgo Beach serial killer. All right? For those who don't know, this is a beach in Long Island in Suffolk County. I believe it was back in 2010. They used to call it the Craigslist killer. This is when they had call girls on Craigslist, and I believe they stopped it. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, we're going to dive right into this. This is real serious. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and dive into this right here. So let me read some of this to you. Right? A suspect in custody in the Gilgo Beach murders, a case that captured national attention and co-founded investigators on Long Island for more than a decade, was identified Friday as Rex Heerman, sources said. He was expected to be arraigned Friday after his arrest Thursday night, says Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney K. Harrison. All right. So, yeah, man, I guess, you know, they're anticipating an indictment on him. And he's out of here, baby. It's over. So right now we're going to dive into one of the phone calls from one of his victims. All right. So this is actually a 911 call. Let's go ahead and press play. Surrounding the three 911 calls made on the day Shannon Gilbert went missing. The full unedited 911 calls are available. And I encourage people to listen to them in their entirety. Portions of the call taken out of context will sound sensational. During the early morning hours of May 1st, 2010, Shannon Gilbert, a Craigslist sex worker and resident of Jersey City, New Jersey, traveled from Manhattan to meet a client, Joseph Brewer, at his home at 8 The Fairway, Oak Beach, New York. I mean, yo, that's a long drive from Jersey to Suffolk County. That's a long drive. Even from Queens to Suffolk County is a long drive. Shannon was driven to Oak Beach from Manhattan by her driver, Michael Pack. Neither one was familiar with the area, neither one had been there before, and neither one had met Brewer before. Pack waited in the car while Shannon was inside with Brewer. Pack was her de facto security. At 4.51 a.m., while at Brewer's house, Shannon called 911. This call lasts for more than 21 minutes. At times, Shannon is speaking calmly, but slurring her words. At times, she is not responsive, and at times she is screaming. During this call, Brewer and Pack are heard trying to get Shannon to leave the house. Shannon eventually does leave the house and runs to Gus Coletti's house, located at 17 The Fairway, which causes him to call 911 at 522 AM. During the early morning hours of May 1st, 2010, Shannon Gilbert traveled to meet a client, Joseph Brewer, at his home at 8 the fairway in the Oak Beach Association. Hey, please, keep a fry. I guess this is the actual location, too. This look very, very, like, desolate, you understand me? Even though you see the houses there, like, you can get away with anything over here, it looks like we're just about, because they got caught. State police. Yeah, there's somebody asking me. I'm sorry? There's somebody asking me. Where are you? There's somebody asking me. Okay, where are you? I mean, you see this house right here? I, I believe that's the actual house, yeah. So look, imagine doing something to someone here. You get me? No one is gonna hear anything. Look how far apart the homes are. There's somebody after me. Where are you, ma'am? I don't know. You're driving right now? No, I'm inside the house. I'm sorry? I'm inside the house. What house? I don't know. Can you trace where I am? I'm sorry? Can you trace where I am? No, I can't. Wow. You know, sometimes the 911 operator, they don't get straight to the point, but I understand they need all the information. To us, it sounds crazy, but I, I believe they have their ways why they ask the questions, but sometimes it's just like, come on, let's get to it. What's your callback number you're calling from? Huh? What phone number are you calling from? And I thought they can see any number that that is calling them. I'm confused. I thought they can see any number that calls them. I'm confused. How do they call numbers back? Somebody's asking me. Please. Are you in Suffolk County or Nassau County? Um, I'm in Long Island. Where on Long Island are you? 
At this point, I know the 911 operator can tell that something is suspicious. Maybe in the beginning she felt like, mm, this person's probably high, drunk. But now she knows serious. She has to know at this point this is serious. No. No. No, stop, no. Where in Long Island are you? In Suffolk County? Nassau County? Huh? Oh. Alright. Why are you calling me by my name? Why? County, you on the line? Stop. Please. Stop it, please. Please stop. Please, can you shut the door? No, time to go. Please. 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 Go that way, please. Come on, let's go. 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 Come on,
He invites her inside his home. Shannon. And she don't know this dude. Oh, and you know the other thing is this right that's also another form of how you can do a breaking and entering you can have someone knock on someone's door and act like a victim you open the door and boom now you're the victim so you know this person took a real a real risk you understand but you know in today's day you got to be careful Hello? Hello? Don't keep the so hurt. Where are you going? Wait a minute. Where are you going? She then runs from Coletti's home, prompting Coletti to call 911. After Coletti's call, Shannon then runs another two-tenths of a mile to another home at 43 the bayou, prompting a third 911 call. At this point, she's definitely on something. She wasn't there. She wasn't herself. She was bugging out. Unfortunately, you know what I mean? One of them put her in that situation. Somebody gave her a fix, and the fix went wrong. So she's just she has a lot of anxiety right now. Made at 5.30 a.m. by Barbara Brennan. Public Police, say seven three with location of emergency. Yes, this uh, I live at Oak Beach in the association. And there's a young girl about fourteen years old running around. What? Fourteen? Oh my goodness! Just screaming, and there's some guy trying to follow her. What's the address, there? I'm at seventeen the fairway. All right, you have a description of the girl or the boy? Pardon me? You have a description of the girl or the boy? The girl is about 14 years old, got blonde hair, very small. The boy, I can't tell, he was into like a, a, a suburban. What color? Uh, black. What black SUV? Michael Pack. Did you happen uh, to get a plate number or anything? No, I didn't. Okay, telephone number you're calling from? Fourth. Uh, Are they still on the fairway? Uh, they just went past the gatehouse where the entrance is. And what's the name of the complex? It's Oak Beach Association. Okay. okay. Out at by Robert Moses. All right. We got somebody over there. I'll be watching. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh, D. Oh, they are bugging right now. Suffolk Police 875. What is the location of your emergency? Uh, 40, 43 the Bayou. Some woman is knocking at my door. What See, town she's are you smart. in? Oak Beach Association. What's the nearest corner street now? Uh, Ocean Parkway. She says she's in danger. Do you know her or no? No, I don't. I'm not letting her in. <laughs> oh, I'm not laughing at the situation, but she is smart, man. You understand? Because she doesn't understand why you're knocking on my door at this time of night. Now, the good thing is she did call 911. So they can come help her, because what can she do? You understand? She doesn't want that problem in her house. Did you on your door now? Yes. Did you say what kind of danger? No. Oh. And we live in a gated community. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Barbara Brennan. Was there a name to that community? Uh, Oak Beach Association. Oak okay. Beach Association. They know I'm serious an now. Mother here. All right, I'll get somebody right over there, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. This is drone footage and footage shot from the ground showing the marshland. It was taken at the same time of year and time of day as when Shannon went missing. These reeds can grow over 12 feet tall. They can disorient someone inside them, causing them to lose a sense of direction. One cannot tell where the highway is or where the bay is. The reeds and brush can become impenetrable in places. Mm. There's a trench running east and west through the marshland. This was created to allow mosquito control. It is believed that Shannon followed this trench. Personal belongings of hers were found just north of the trench. Shannon's remains were found north of the trench, about 158 feet south of Ocean Parkway, approximately three quarters of a mile from where she was last seen. 
I don't understand why they why they had to do that to her though. I'm confused. There has been information received during the course of this investigation that other people might be involved in this incident. Hmm. They have all been investigated okay. and there is no reason to believe at this time that anyone else is involved in this tragic series of events. The police responded to Coletti and Brennan's 911 calls. Pack, Brewer, and Shannon were all gone. Gus Coletti provided a description of Pack's car, which was also gone. This created the possibility that Shannon had been driven out of the area, which caused a delay in the initial search for her. The police department has thoroughly investigated this case for more than a decade. The official cause of Shannon's death is undetermined. This official classification means there is insufficient or no evidence to determine or even to exclude an actual cause of death. This is ridiculous right here. I am telling you this is ridiculous. All right, so now we're going to dive into fast-forwarding it to today where they actually caught the man, and he's about to get indicted. You understand what I'm saying? Forces tell CBS News that police in New York have arrested a suspect in connection with a series of murders on Long Island. They're known as the, Gig the Gilgo Beach murders, rather. Uh, and beginning back in 2010, the first of 10 bodies were found. Now, Pat Milton has been following this story for us. She's a senior producer for CBS News' investigative unit. Uh, Pat, I'm glad you're joining us. I, you know, for a lot of people who don't live, live in New York, they might have been unfamiliar with these murders and the way the case sort of gripped New York City. So can you give us a little bit of background on the case and tell us what's happening now? Yes, uh, I can tell you what's happening now is that uh, they have a uh, suspect uh, in custody uh, he was uh, taken into custody by uh, Suffolk County Police and State Police uh, at his home in Massapequa Park, which is on Long Island, on the south shore of Long Island. And uh, he's due to be uh, arraigned um, today in Riverhead at Suffolk County uh, District Court. And Massapequa is far from where they found the bodies at. We don't know what the charges are at this point. And... Uh, while we have been told uh, on background uh, the name, we're not releasing uh, the name at this uh, at this time uh, also. Um, it's been a, a, a long haul uh, of investigation. It's been a long solved mystery that uh, has captured uh, the uh, uh, minds and hearts of, and attention of everyone uh, across the country. They even had a, a movie made on it. Um, it was basically uh, uh -huh. 10 uh, women uh, that were found, uh, their bodies and remains were found in Gilgo Beach, which is uh, a remote beach on Long Island on the South Shore. And uh, what initially uh, happened was that uh, one woman uh, was reported uh, missing. Apparently, she had uh, put her name on a Craigslist and uh, was uh, offering uh, a sexual partnership and uh, she was reported missing. Uh, the police went out uh, looking for her uh, with cadaver dogs and uh, search units, and uh, they didn't immediately come across uh, her remains, but they did come across of four other women's remains. Uh, and it just, uh, again, captured uh, uh, the, uh, the attention of, uh, of everyone. Hmm. And Pat, I don't know if you can sort of remember, but um, did the women have anything in common? Have they all been identified? I mean, what do we know about the other victims? I believe they were all sex workers. They were all on Craigslist. Well, many of them uh, have been identified as uh, people that uh, uh, were advertising uh, mm. for uh, sex. And uh, that's not been confirmed, but many of them have been uh, identified as that. Mm. And uh, um, uh, again, uh, it was a mystery. They've uh, they've been looking for a long time uh, for us for a suspect, and uh, the about a year ago, the FBI and the police department uh, formed a task force uh, to try to get to the bottom of this. And uh, and it appears that uh, right now they do uh, have a suspect in custody. Hmm. Fascinating, uh, Pat Milton. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. May all the lives lost, may they all rest in peace. Regardless of what the decision was, how to make money, they still never deserve that. You understand me? And for the families, may they have some closure, all right? So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.